Yo, Elliot, I want to start a channel for instructional track and field strength, as well as conditioning content. How do you stay authentic while being the persona that your client needs you to be? And so what I, I think you're probably referring to is various conversations in this course where I've talked about being the thing that your clients want, right? We owe, Dan Kennedy, my business mentor, has always said you have to be at least one step ahead of your clients, meaning that, like, for example, you dangle a carrot in front of the horse, right? That means that there's something for him to reach towards. Right? You ever heard that, dangling the carrot? I remember watching cartoons when I was a kid, and they would, you know, they would have a stick with a carrot on the end, and they, they'd get on the horse, and the horse would, like, chase the carrot. Well, in a way, you're the dangling carrot for your clients, meaning that they're somewhere, but they want to get to another place. And so you're that place. So you can do that either through your, your charisma, which is always very helpful, especially in a world where people want to be entertained. It is what it is, but it, it, as well as it is expedient, but people want entertainment. One of the things I'm starting to notice right now, and you know, maybe it's just because I'm slow to roll, is that my videos, my videos, these videos, are, they're, they're tanking in views as opposed to a few years ago. And one of the reasons I assert that is, is because the new media is very uh, entertaining, right? People are doing short form uh, content with graphics and, you know, getting right to the point. And so it just asserts the point that people want candy. They, they want to be entertained. They want it to feel good. So one of the things Dan Kennedy often spoke about was infotaining. You want to infotain. He also says that people come to you for information, right? You may Google something because you want information. You may be looking on YouTube for something uh, to give you information. He says, people will come to you for the information, but they don't stay for the information. They stay for the character or like you say, persona. Now you ask about being authentic. To be authentic is to be an author, right? That's where the word authentic comes from, right? Something that's authentic is something that is real. It is also the word author means that it was created by this individual, right? Also the word authority, authentic, authority, author. It's all about speaking your word, right? Giving your word, giving your essence, your authenticity. And so if we're wanting to entertain people with our information to draw them in and keep them in, the way we maintain authenticity is twofold. Number one, peeling back the curtain a little bit so people see you as a human being that they could know, like, and trust. I understood this principle very early on because I, I study direct response marketing. Uh, when I was creating YouTube videos. So there was no shortage of peeling back the curtain so people could see what Elliot was like outside of the information that we're giving. You'll notice I tell a lot of stories. This is another part of peeling back the curtain. So as a, as a strength coach, right, you're a strength coach, uh, you're going to teach them the, the information, but then you can always bring up a story about how that information impacted your life or impacted another one of your clients. Stories are charismatic. What do I mean by that? They, they carry an element of charism. There's a, there's, a, there's a grace to it. People offer a grace to someone who tells a story. We're, we're trained, or not even trained, I think it's just in our DNA to stop and listen when someone's telling a story. When somebody's delivering information it's easy to just kind of check out, just notice yourself. I noticed myself this weekend when I was at the Protector Summit, listening to some of the speakers. Some of the speakers would be you know, going on about a particular topic and they're giving information. The minute they would stop and start a story, tell a story, I perked up. I couldn't help myself. I was drawn into the story. Now, after the story was over, I would notice that my intention, my attention began to wane, right? I'm a byproduct of this generation too, short attention span. Plus they told me I had ADD when I was a kid, so maybe it's legit. But when someone tells a story or is telling a story, all of a sudden my attention is wrapped. It's the same thing with your clients. You want to give them the information, but you also want to give them 
stories. Uh, I said it was twofold. The other fold, so one is peeling back the curtain. And this is the second part of it is very, is, is analogous, it's very similar to the first part. And that is you want to enhance a little bit, right? Not lie, not exaggerate, but enhance a little bit what it is that you're, you're, uh, you're trying to share to the person. What do I mean by that? Or, or even your delivery gets to be a bit enhanced. So for example, the way I speak here, you see me in these videos, it's the way I speak in real life, but I'm enhancing it for sure. I use a little bit more hand gestures. I use my face to sort of relay things. See how I did that? I opened up my eyes, right? Char charisma uh, can come, the come in the form of bodily postures, right? How you hold yourself. I remember when I was first making YouTube videos and I wasn't, I'm a little weird. I wasn't trying to get famous on YouTube, right? <laughs> I was just making videos because I knew that they would lead to more clients, right? So I, to me, it was purely practical. It was never about getting, getting, garnering a, a large following. But I was approached once by the Hodge twins, right? And if you've been in the fitness world on YouTube, you know the Hodge twins and they were like, they had like 10 times more subscribers than me. They reached out to me and they said, hey, buddy, uh, I got some tips for you. It was Keith, the older of the brothers. I got a few tips for you uh, that I think will help your channel. I was like, oh, yeah, sure. I'm very open to that. And one of them was, and I also noticed it, the closer I got or the closer they got that I noticed, but even me now, this is back in 2013, the closer I got to the camera. Right. So I'm doing it now and I'm not, I don't have the setup for it like I used to. But if you watch some of my old videos, I'm very close to the camera. That gives people a sense of intimacy. And so I noticed as I started getting closer to the camera, my view count was up. My, the people would watch the videos a lot longer. Why? Because there was an, there was an element of charisma by merely being close to the camera. Other things that I did, I don't do it so much anymore, but I, would, I began to notice that when I took my shirt off, I had my shirt off, there were more views, right? As a strength coach, people want to know that you have what they want, which is muscle, right? And so right now I just have a shirt on, I just look like a dude, but if I take my shirt off and from the neck up, you see my traps, they're, they're attractive. He was, wow, man, look at that guy's traps. Or the kid who does... Um, more plates for dates. He's got like these big boulder shoulders, right? And so he makes sure that he wears tank tops and his boulder shoulders. So when I say enhance, in another way, it means feature your features, right? Like what do you have going on good for you, right? And for different people, it's different things. Charisma is not always extroverted. Did you know this? I remember reading a study that some marketers uh, had, had addressed when it came to the company, the hamburger selling company, uh, Wendy's, right? I'm pretty sure they have them in Europe too, but I think they call it something else. But Wendy's is a hamburger, like a, like a McDonald's here. And I don't know, I, I don't even know if he's alive anymore, but I remember back in like the eighties and early nineties, the actual founder and CEO of Wendy's would be in the commercials. And he was sort of like a, a, a dry, boring, frumpy old guy, right? Dave Thomas, I don't know if anybody remembers, Dave Thomas, Dave Thomas, remember here, Dave Thomas. There was nothing charismatic about the guy. The guy was just plain, he wasn't attractive, but he would just say what he had to say. They recognized that when he was removed from the commercials, Wendy's sales went down. You might say to yourself, well, you know, he's not Ronald McDonald, right? He's not a clown, he's not putting on and entertaining people. But by mere virtue of his display of his general disposition and people's coming to relationship with him, knowing him, hey, that's Dave Thomas, liking him, he's sort of a, a nice guy, right? Who doesn't like a nice guy and trusting him because he sort of had like, a, like an old, like your old uncle, right? He was like, kind of like your dad, right? He was like your dad. So there was this no like and trust factor for this basically introverted, just normal dude. Right, so you don't have to ham it up. I have a, I have a certain charism about me where I can get real hyped up and I start talking fast and then I, then I sound like a rapper sometimes. I make things rhyme, but.
but that's just me. That's just me. Don't try to be me, right? But enhance what you already got going on. Be you a little bit more. Does that make sense? And that way you come across uh, larger than life, right? And people are attracted to people that are larger than life. There's a lot of principles to everything I'm saying here. In fact, uh, I lay this all out in an advanced course that I created. I really haven't promoted it much to you guys, but it's called um, uh, King Leadership. And in the King Leadership, I give 30 principles of, of uh, influence. So one of them, one of, one of the very first principles of influence is telling stories, namely your story. And Dan Kennedy refers to this as your origin story. So for example, like uh, Batman, right? And, and he, he would teach you to refer to yourself as a superhero, right? Think of yourself in terms of a superhero. And because superheroes, the comic book writers always understood these principles and so that they would, they would embed them into the story of the superheroes. And so, for example, everybody knows Batman, right? You know his story, right? So you know why he's doing what he's doing. So he was a kid and his parents were wealthy and they were out in the city one day, both parents got killed. So now he was by himself as a wealthy kid with his butler, right? And so here's this wealthy kid uh, who's now living on his own and he becomes a vigilante of sorts. He's like, these people killed my parents. Now I'm out to get them, right? So you know when Batman's doing what he's doing, why he's doing it, right? He's got a trauma. There's a trauma in his life. And now he's, he's dedicated to this. So a lot of guys in fitness say we're like fat, right? Oh, man, I grew up and, and, and so I was once a loser, right? Losing your parents or being overweight. These are, these are, these are wounds, I was fat my whole life. My parents were really fat and um, I discovered something. And now look at me, I'm ripped, I'm lean. Let me show you how I did it, right? So that in fact is a formula that you can use in order to teach people why you do what you're doing and, uh, and also demonstrate why they should trust you, right? I'm building my webinar for the King Transformation Program and I'm talking about how I got red pilled, right? How I woke up and uh, you guys don't, you, I refer this story to you guys sometimes, but you don't know the full story. You know, my other old stories, I have stories about being $90,000 in debt and training people out of the back of my van with trash in the parks and how that became strength camp, right? That's an origin story. Many of you guys can just tell. You, you know that story. You can tell other people. You know your origin story sticks when people tell other people your story. The story now where I've redirected my efforts towards making men strong again, that's my mission. It used to be become the strongest version of yourself, right? But I had this shift towards working with men after my father-in-law died. So I have a story. I had a dream. This is a true, true story. Back in like 2017 or 18, it was 2018, uh, I woke up from a dream. And in my dream, I was de delivered a message, right? I, I can't say who or how, right? Maybe it was God or my, my, art, my guardian angel. But in this dream, I received the message that, Elliot, you and your father-in-law are about to make Colleen very miserable. And I woke up feeling terrible, like, whoa. Why? And that's so strange. The two authority figures as men in, in Colleen's life or about to make her miserable. I was like, wow, what is this all about? The next day or you know, 48 hours later, it was very shortly after her father died. Her father passed away. And I knew that he wasn't alone in this message. It was also me. And so it was in that moment that I started to really take on the mantle of real husband and father. I was always husband and father, but I never, I never put I never saw it as my vocation, right? As I do now. And then also as my testimony to the world, right? This is a, this is a part of my evangelization, right? I evangelize the family. That's why I, you know, I talk so much about the things I talk about when it relates to women and family, right? Like last week, all the videos were about dealing with women. Why? Because I'm an evangelist for family. 
I wasn't that before, but once I healed that wound in myself, I didn't realize how effeminate I was behaving. I didn't realize how much of a blue pill beta I was. Here I am walking around with muscles, acting like a tough guy, but I was not tough at all. I was, I was very weak in my character, especially when it came to being a husband and a father. I wasn't doing anything sinful per se. Like I said, I wasn't carrying it like a real man. And over the course of a year or so, God started to place information and experiences along my path that has brought me to where I am today. And now I'm here to share that with you. So here's the formula for telling that kind of story. And, and, and you, can use, you can manipulate this formula somewhat, but it's very broad. I was once a loser, right? When I woke up that morning, I was a loser. And then when her father died, I, I was a loser. Or the person that was fat all his life, he was a loser. Or Batman, when his parents, he lost his parents, he was a loser. I was a loser. I had something bad that was going on in me that I wasn't satisfied with, right? This is, and everybody can relate to that, right? You know, be it overcoming addiction or, you know, anything, right? People can relate to it. They can't relate to, the reason why Superman has kryptonite, I know I'm speaking all over the place, is because people, before Superman had kryptonite, there were other superheroes that had, there was nothing wrong with them. They were super and they couldn't be taken down. The reason why Superman became a superhero to the degree that he is, you know, worldwide, is because he had kryptonite. Kryptonite is the wound. Everybody has a wound. Everybody can relate to a wound. So you begin that story with your wound. I was a loser. That's number one. I discovered something. Boom, a light went off. I had an epiphany. I read a book. I met a mentor. Whatever it is, right? I discovered something. Oh, now I'm a winner. Look, I fixed my life. I lost the weight. I, I you know, I repaired my family. I, I, uh, I, I stopped masturbating, whatever it is, right? I'm a winner now. And look, my life is even better as a result. I'm making more money. I'm more attractive to women. And blah, blah, blah. Look at all this. Look at what's happening to me. I have six pack abs. Step four, let me show you how. Right? You can do that as a, as a strength coach. You can say, there was a time, and I'm sure as an athlete, you may, have, you may remember a time where I wasn't very good. There was a time when I wasn't very good and I lost my first few matches or races or whatever. And, uh, and I, wasn't doing, I wasn't doing as well as I knew I could. I was a loser. But then I discovered something. I discovered this type of strength training. I discovered this kind of equipment. I discovered this meal plan. I discovered this supplement. I discovered this thing. And now look at me. I won some trophies. I won some medals. And now as, and you always have to have a reason why, right? Now, because I never want to see other athletes struggle like I did, I'm here to show you how. Because I never want other husbands to struggle as I did, now I'm here to show you how. Because I never want another fat kid to suffer being bullied ever again, now I'm here to show you how. You see what I'm saying? So these are all like, these are all principles. These are, these are not just random tactics. I would invite you to email me if you're interested uh, about my King Leadership Program, and I'll, I'll help you get that, right? I, I created it. I give you all my principles. I show different examples, including myself. It's several hours worth of tremendous content plus uh, assignments for you to follow in order to build your to build your influence. Or just study Dan Kennedy, right? Dan Kennedy has some. Um, he has a book or he has a course called the Influential Writing Course. I, I get most of the principles from that, right? It's, a, it's like a five thousand dollar course, but well worth it. Um, and he's got other books that are like that are about writing sales copy. And he has one called personality in copy. These are things that everybody in business should know. Uh, you know, a part of why I have such longevity is because I followed these principles. I've invited you guys into my life. In fact, this weekend, when I was with the Kings at the event, I invited them into my house. You guys are in my house. 
And so that kind of intimacy keeps people coming back. They keep you, they keep them attracted to you. And me, I actually enjoy that, right? I enjoy it. I enjoy being intimate with you guys in that way, much more so than, you know, being on forums, but that's what keep people coming around. So you as a trainer, you got to relay that to them. I'll give you one more template to follow because there's so much that could be shared about this. In fact, a lot of this is also in the non-job revolution course that you guys have free access to in this program. So feel free to go in there and take a look at this stuff. Um, here's another formula. The problem, state the problem, right? You either could be about you, I was a loser, here was my problem, but you could just state a general problem, right? The problem with men today is that they suffer from effeminacy. Oh, you hear that, right? First, you got to, it's a diagnosis. So you got to like describe the diet. What is a feminacy? And what, what does that even mean, right? So you describe a problem. It should be a problem that people can relate to right away. But, you know, teaching is also helpful. Problem today is most men are feminine. That's number one. Number two, I'm giving you a template. Number two, here's what most men do. So you sort of describe well, you know, most men, uh, when they discover that they're effeminate and they realize that uh, women have been taking advantage of them and, uh, you know, they're, they're struggling as a result, they get red pill rage, right? You know, these guys who like they discover, they read, they read uh, Rollo Tomasi's book for the first time, or they come across red pill philosophy, they watch some of the guys on YouTube and they're like, boom, whoa, Nobody told me about this. Why didn't I know? Arr! And then they get mad and they get become disdainful towards women, right? The, there's, I don't think MGTOW is a bad idea, but every action is measured by the sentiment from which it proceeds. There's a lot of guys in MGTOW that are just bitter. They're just angry, right? They're just, they just, they've given up, they've washed their hands. And they're like, ah, I can't, I'm not gonna do this anymore, right? So there's a problem of feminacy, right? being a beta male, women don't either acknowledge you or respect you or whatever it is, right? It's the problem. What most, what most men do when they, they, they find out what's going on, they get angry, right? What most people do. The right way to do it, right? So now you start relating to them the right way to do it. And this all comes across either through copy or through your videos. The right way to do it, right? So let's use the same example, the right way to do it. The right way to do it is to just be objective about the fact that there is a male and female nature. There is female nature. You don't resist female nature. You manage it or you, you, you work with it, right? And there are checks and balances that have been traditional that put a check on both male and female lower nature just today because women rule the world today, right? Now we live in a gynocentric world. We live in a, a gynocracy right? Or, or, or matriarchy, right? Regardless of what they say, we are, there's no longer a male focused world, right? And this is a part of the diabolical delusion of our day, right? The disorientation of our day, right? In fact, part of my webinar, I'm doing research, the fall of every single empire, right? I'm, if you've ever get a chance to read the fate of empires by Glub, forget his first name, he asserts and shows historic proof that at the fall of all these empires, right before they topple, females rise in power, right? Women destroy societies, right? There's a reason why patriarchy has been the, the way societies work. Societies work during a patriarchy, but societies fall when they become a matriarchy, right? Even if you think about the Aztecs, right? The Aztecs, they fell, they fell, and then patriarchy came in, and then uh, uh, Mexico was converted. So there's a right way to do it, right? The right way to do it is to be a, to, to maintain your frame, to be a to love women in a patriarchal way, right? Which means a fatherly way, right? What does a father do? He creates boundaries, right? And women actually prefer a man that provides boundaries for them. They may resist, or if they have the real diabolical feminism within them, they'll fight and stuff. But these will just be miserable women. But women who are on the on the edge, they just they don't know because the world has tricked them. Once they find a a real alpha male, a lot of them just melt. They're like, oh, tell me what to do, please. I just want to serve you, right? Because that's the right way to do it, is to carry yourself with dignity as a man, not a simp, right? And one of the things that I often talk about is weaponized chastity. That's why I talk about not having, one of the right ways to do it to overcome a feminacy is to stop fornicating, right? And a big part of the reason why we've gotten where we are is because of the so-called 
sexual revolution. Sexual revolution was about freeing women from the natural law as it relates to procreation by giving birth control pills and abortion. If there's no birth control pills and there's no abortion, there will, there will be a there will be a reversal. There will be a reversal, but you know, disoriented as a culture. And then see so the right way to do it. Let me show you how. So let me go back. This is just another template I'm giving you in terms of how to build influence with your audience. Problem, what most people do the wrong way, the right way to do it, let me show you how. Here's my offer, buy my book, take my course, join my program, you see what I'm saying? So anyway, marketing isn't just advertising, guys. Marketing is psychological and it's not about manipulation. It's about speaking to people the way they want to be spoken to so that they would be willingly influenced by you because you have something good to offer them, right? It's not about manipulating people and influencing them to do things that, that, that are bad for them. This is another one, and I keep talking about women because you know, this is what it is, uh, when it comes to uh, father and husband headship in a family. Author I was listening to Ch Father Riverger talk today. He says, a man's authority in his home over his wife, which is divine and natural law. It might not be the civil law. Somebody was arguing with me in a comment the other day. They were like, oh, Elliot, you got it all wrong. Men have no rights. No, you have divine and natural law. You have divine and natural rights by God, the father and nature. Just because the civil authorities don't honor God and nature doesn't mean that they're right. But uh, so the truth is in the eyes of God, you have authority over your wife. You should have authority over your wife. Otherwise, you're derelict in your duty. You're not doing the right thing. But what Father Ripperger was saying is that you don't have authority for your sake. I don't have authority in my family for my sake, right? I have authority over my family for their sake. So a righteous leader in a home doesn't use, wield his authority so that he can lord himself over, over people and, and for his own benefit. Your authority as a man is not for your own benefit, it is for your wife's benefit. So if you tell her to do something or not to do something, it has to be for her best interest. You're not gonna tell her to do anything that's not for her best interest. I see some of these red pill or, or, or you know, manosphere guys, <sighs> we were talking about Jack Murphy the other day and he was talking about how much of an alpha male he is because he let his wife or he encouraged his wife to have sex with other men, right? And apparently he likes to watch that. That's him using his authority over her to, to turn her away from God, away from what's right, away from wholeness and virtue, right? It, and that's why it's our responsibility as men. I know this is, I'm going off on a tangent here. We have to be in a state of grace. We have to be righteous first. We have to be good with God so that we can use his authority in the guidance of our family. So anyway, I... I'm going off on tangents that aren't related to what you're saying, what you're asking me. So anyway, it all kind of works together as well. You know, you're never not marketing. You're marketing if you're in business, but you're also marketing to your family, right? You're marketing to your friends. It's a matter of having influence over people, even authority if you're in that position, but for their good, because you know you have something better for them. You know that, I know, for example, that you guys in my program, I know that your lives are going to be better if you get into my program, right? But I can't just say that and you say, oh, okay, well, I guess Elliot's right, right? No, I have to demonstrate it. I show testimonials, I give examples, I tell you why, right? And then I use myself as an example, telling stories. So anyway, this is our first question of the day. So I'm a little long winded on that, but I think you understand what I'm saying, dude. And I think that's going to help you when you start your YouTube channel. Always remember infotain, infotain. Don't just inform and don't just be an entertainer, right? Unless, look, entertainers are the ones that have, you know, billions of viewers, but it's just brain candy, right? It's just brain candy. Oh, this is fun. Like stuff that my, my children watch. A lot of grown men that just get hooked into entertainment. I am not, I don't get into entertainment, right? Because it's a waste of my time. I mean, you don't want to waste your viewers' time just entertaining them. You know, maybe, maybe you do. I don't know, but I'm not in that game. I'm in the game of 
relaying information, giving insights and changing people's lives. And so I think you're in that same boat, dude. Hope that helps, done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. That sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.